subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 25th of July. India's first tribal president, Draupadi Murmu, says a proof that poor can not only dream but also fulfill them. Sri Lankan president's office reopens after crackdown on anti-government protesters. An activist in Germany protests against fake encounters in Balochistan by Pakistan. And now for all the details, Draupadi Murmu was sworn in as India's 15th president on Monday, becoming the country's first president from tribal community to assume the highest public office in the world's largest democracy. 64-year-old teacher turned politician, Murmu, in a first address to the country as president, said her election to the top constitutional post proves that in India, the poor can not only dream but also fulfill those aspirations. Veteran leader Draupadi Murmu, who hails from the tribal community on Monday, took oath as the 15th president of India at the Central Hall of the Parliament. Murmu, accompanied by outgoing President Ramnath Govind, was escorted by Vice President and Chairman of the Rajya Sabha M. Venkaya Naidu and Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla to the Central Hall. Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana administered the oath of office of the highest constitutional post of the country to Murmu. The oath-taking ceremony was followed by a 21-gun salute. In her first address to the country as President, Murmu, the first tribal and second woman to hold the country's highest constitutional office, said her elevation to the post is not only her own achievement, but that of every poor of the country. <laughs> President Murmu called for united effort to build a glorious and self-reliant India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi described Murmu taking over as India's new president as a watershed moment for the country, especially the poor, marginalized and downtrodden. President Murmu later received a ceremonial salute at the forecourt of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, her home and office for the next five years. She succeeds Ramnath Govin, whose five-year term ended on July 24. Former President Govin also received one final tri-services guard of honour before leaving the Rashtrapati Bhavan. On Sunday, in his address to the nation on the last day of his office, Govind expressed a belief that the country is capable of making the 21st century as the one belonging to India. And in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's presidential office resumed operations on Monday amid tight security arrangements, two days after security forces launched a crackdown on protesters, clearing a section of their camp outside the building. The new president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, has said non-violent protest over against his government over the ongoing economic crisis will be allowed to continue. Sri Lanka's presidential secretariat, which was stormed by a sea of anti-government protesters in early July, resumed operations from Monday, 100 days after the building's entry gate was blocked by agitators, demanding a complete system overhaul over the country's worst economic crisis. The scheme after last Friday, hundreds of security personnel dismantled part of a protest camp outside the building in Colombo, raising fears of a wider crackdown by new President Ranil Vikramasinghe, elected by the parliament last week after former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled the country following a public uprising. Vikramasinghe's office on Sunday said he was told diplomats who expressed concern over the Friday's military raid that non-violent protests against his government will be allowed to continue. Leaders of the protest movement also vowed on Sunday that they will continue their agitation.
we are protesting for a just society and we are being attacked brutally and we condemn and say we will continue this protest of love whatever the attack they are going to give even today they might attack us but we will resist and we will face it the island nation of 22 million people is wilting under a severe foreign exchange shortage that has left it struggling to pay for essential imports of fuel fertilizer food and medicine the government has also defaulted on its 51 billion US dollars foreign debt and is currently in bailout talks with the International Monetary Fund. And moving on, Baloch nationalists have for decades campaigned for greater autonomy of Balochistan and against human rights violations by Pakistani security forces on Baloch people. Highlighting the unending plight of abductions, killings and enforced disappearances, activists in Germany recently held a protest against the rising number of fake encounters by Pakistan's counter-terrorism department on innocent Baloch people. Members of the Baloch National Movement, a political party seeking an independent Balochistan, held a protest in Germany's Bonn recently against the rising number of fake encounters in the southwestern province by Pakistan's Counter-Terrorism Department or CTD. During the demonstration, the participants raised slogans, distributed pamphlets on fake encounters of forcibly disappeared persons in Balochistan and made locals aware of the atrocities committed by the Pakistan Army and other law enforcement agencies. Several activists highlighted how innocent Baloch people were killed by CTD in the name of encounter in order to justify their killing. These acts of Pakistan are war crimes and it is the responsibility of international organizations and states to hold Pakistan accountable for heinous war crimes in Balochistan, they demanded. We also today want to request the international community, the European Union, especially the United Nations, that stop supporting Pakistan, stop funding Pakistan, because with your funds, they are buying the weapons, they are doing the terrorism in Balochistan, they are killing the Baloch people. According to the human rights activists, Baloch people are being abducted without any warrant, being tortured inhumanely and killing the enforcedly disappeared Baloch in a fake encounter and claiming them as terrorists has become a norm. An annual report of the Human Rights Council of Balochistan, which is an organization that documents human rights violations in the province, has said that students remain the main target of these kidnappings both in Balochistan as well as in other provinces of Pakistan. And moving on, Shah Ghulam Kadir, opposition PMLN party leader in Pakistan administered Kashmir, has raised concern over proposed formulation of a tourism promotion body in the region. He has accused that mafias are planning to capture forest lands under its guise. Shah Ghulam Qadir, the PMLN party president in Pakistan, administered Kashmir, has raised his concern over a proposed bill and visaging establishment of a tourism promotion body and has alleged that forest mafias are planning to grab forest lands under its guise. Qadir said the ruling PTI government has made a plan to capture all the beautiful forest areas in the illegally occupied region in the name of Tourism Development Authority. He said that unsustainable and exploitative tourism practices in the forest will not only harm the fragile ecosystems but also wildlife species. He said all the leaders of PMLN strongly condemn and oppose this law in which forests will be cleared in the name of tourism. We will the Tourism Development Authority जो एक्ट पास करने की कोशिश की जा रही है उस एक्ट के जरिए तमाम हिल टॉप्स जितने भी हैं हिल टॉप्स आजाद कश्मीर में नीलम से लेकर पुंछ तक इन सब में जो है टूरिज्म के नाम पे जंगलात का सफाया कर दिया जाएगा लोकल्स वर री द कंटीन्यूअस इंटरवेंशंस एंड ग्रेवली इंपैक्टेड द रीजंस इकोलॉजी एंड अनकंट्रोल्ड कन्वेंशनल टूरिज्म कैन बी हार्मफुल वेयर रिसोर्सेज आर ऑलरेडी स्कार्स but they say the corrupt stooge government in the region is only bothered about filling its treasuries. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's Minister of Vice and Virtue, Mohammad Khalid Hanafi, has said that the ruling Taliban is ready 
for engagement with the international community, but its offers, if they are against Islam, are not acceptable. He made the remarks while decrying sanctions against the Islamic Emirate. Taliban Acting Minister of Vice and Virtue, Mohammad Khalid Hanafi, said on Sunday that the Islamic Emirate is ready for engagement with the international community, but its offers, if they are against Islam, are not acceptable. He added while decrying sanctions against the Islamic Emirate. He made the remarks during a visit to Ghazni province, where he called on government employees to adjust their appearance based on Islamic laws, adding that the women are observing hijab or veil 100% since the Taliban swept into power last August. This comes days after Hanafi said the international community is pressing the Taliban under the pretext of human rights, reacting on a UN report that particularly mentioned the role of his ministry in violations, including extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests, and inhumane punishments in the 10 months since the Islamic Emirate seized power. The hardest hit victims were those associated with former government and its security forces. The international community has made ensuring human rights and the education of girls key demands for any future recognition of the Taliban administration. Afghanistan's assets which have remained frozen due to sanctions have severely hampered banking, business and development. Well, more on news from Afghanistan. A cholera outbreak has affected hundreds of people in parts of Afghanistan, including northern Georgetown and southern Kandahar provinces. Reports suggest at least 20 children have lost their lives due to the disease in Helmand province since early this month. Hundreds of people have been affected with cholera that has spread in parts of Afghanistan, mainly northern Jorzjan and southern Helmand and Kandahar provinces. Gosuddin Anwari, a senior official at the provincial hospital in Jorzjan, said cases are on a remarkable rise, with nearly 1,000 patients in Akcha district, where there is a lack of access to clean water, while 3,000 people have been affected in the Shibargan city in recent weeks. According to World Health Organization, cholera is an acute diarrheal illness caused by infection of the intestine with Vibrio cholera bacteria when people swallow contaminated food or water. The infection is often mild or without symptoms, but can sometimes be severe and life-threatening. Reports suggest at least 20 children have lost lives due to cholera in Helmand province, while 180 people, including women and children, were affected in Kandhar. The outbreak is a major test for Afghanistan's hardline Taliban rulers who have been shunned by many foreign governments due to concerns about human rights. Late in June, the United Nations had warned of cholera outbreaks in Afghanistan in the aftermath of the country's deadliest earthquake in two decades, saying that half a million cases of acute watery diarrhea had already been reported. And thousands of Hindu devotees across India thronged temples to offer prayers to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, on the second Monday of the holy monsoon month of Shravan. The Mondays of Shravan are considered extremely auspicious in Hindu religion. Thousands of devotees from across the country gathered at the famous Sri Mahakaleshwar Temple in India's northern Ujjain city to witness Bhasma Arti ritual on the second Monday of monsoon month of Shravan and offered prayers to the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva. The Mondays of Shravan are considered to be one of the most auspicious days as per Hindu calendar. As part of the rituals, priests offered honey, milk, lotus flowers and bilva leaves to the Shiva Lingam the phallus representation of Lord Shiva. It is believed that praying to Lord Shiva during Shravan brings luck and prosperity. Long queues of enthusiastic devotees were also witnessed at the Daksha Mahadev temple of Lord Shiva in northern Haridwar town. The devotees brought different offerings to seek blessings of Lord Shiva.
सब लोग बाहर आ रहे हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू कॉमन बिलीफ मैरिड वुमेन ऑल्सो ऑब्जर्व फास्टिंग ऑन मंडेज ऑफ श्रावन एंड प्रे फॉर लॉन्गर लाइफ फॉर देर हजबेंड्स वेर एज दी अनमेरिड वंस प्रे टू लॉर्ड शिवा टू गेट ए सूटेबल मैच Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at @sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.